Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I'm going to do a book and course review on how to make this beautiful little cloth doll. It's by Patty Kulea. This is not a tutorial on how to make the doll. It is a review of the book, the course, and some of my process of making her. So I hope you'll join me. So this all started when I found this book here at a book sale and this just totally made my heart sing. I was so excited when I found this book. I, I've always wanted to do a project like this. So um, this book is really amazing. It's full of inspiration and all of the basics on how to make a cloth doll. And if you're pretty proficient, you might be able to do the cloth doll just from this book alone. But I ended up getting the DVD, which is now available as a course um, from Galley Studio. And this is from Patty Kulia. And between these two, this is a very comprehensive course. This is a two and a half to three hour video tutorial on how to make the doll. And then I also got a pattern when I got the video and this has some additional information. So all these three together were quite comprehensive. But this book has so much inspiration. So she goes through all the basics on, you know, how to do the face and how to paint the fabric, how to join the body parts together. And she has three different doll patterns. So this is doll number one. This is the one that I'm making. And she has just a flat face and basic body parts. There are other dolls in here that are more sculpted. And this is one that is, this isn't done by Patty. Um, these there's all kinds of inspirational ideas in this book there's some really amazing artists these are other artists that sent their um, dolls in to contribute to this book so in the back she has the patterns there's three different patterns and uh, everything from a very basic pattern to a more complicated sculpted pattern and there's some little patterns here for like the wings, the ear, and a sleeve and bodice and some shoes. There's no pattern for pants or skirt in this book. And so these are all really great resources for the cloth doll making. So I'm already well into my project and the idea of actually making this into a blog post and a video was an afterthought because originally I was doing this just for myself. I didn't want to do it as a tutorial, but it's been such a fun process. And if I can inspire people to take on a project like this, then I thought it would be worth it. So I am well into the project, but not too far along that you can't uh, see what I'm doing. But before I do that, I just want to show you these little guys. So I started sewing when I was very young and I actually made these two dolls when I was five or six years old. All I know is before I went to school, before I went to kindergarten and my mom made the dress for this doll here, but I made the doll out of a, a sock and my mom stitched the nose and the mouth, I'm quite sure, and probably attached the eyes as well, because that's very neat. But this one here, I actually made the whole doll myself, and I sewed this on a sewing machine. My mom would take the, the box, the lid of the sewing machine, and then put the pedal on the lid, and then I actually sewed this on a sewing machine. I was only five or six years old, and you can see here, I hand-stitched it closed myself, and these buttons are uh, have a little clip in the back, and then I just drew the mouth on. And then I made these clothes myself, and this is from a jacket. It's the jacket sleeve, and that's the cuff that would go around the wrist. And then I cut that and made it into the little pants, and then took another part of the jacket and made a little vest. And there's that little clip there for the button. 
So, you know, I was very crafty already at a very young age, and these are so precious. So it doesn't surprise me that I've come back to doll making as an adult. So I was aspiring to make this doll here on the cover, and I really wanted to paint these um, colored paints. And you do this with fabric paint or fabric dye. But when it came down to it, I actually chickened out. And so you could use a uh, batik fabric instead or any other fa funky fabric, and that would be a lot of fun. And she recommends handy tools to help stuff the dolls in all these little tight areas, these small fingertips and so forth. So rather than using colored paints, I played it really safe and I just painted the body in a skin tone. And you can see here that I made all the body parts and I'm in the process of attaching them using a little button joint attachment for the legs. So I have some movement there. So I still have to do the arms, attach the arms. And again, they're all very basic. Some of these patterns uh, do have uh, joints and they have the wire armitage and the wrist attaches, uh, you sew the hand on. And she has the tutorial on how to draw and paint the face. And she shows you step by step how to do this and it's easier than you think. And I do have a bit of sound, uh, experience with uh, painting faces, but this is just done using Prisma color pencils and just shading in with the Prisma color pencils and using some art pens to do the detailing. And so I just did a, a bigger sample on this is the original color of the fabric and so this is what I dyed the fabric to look like and I should show you she talks about using a particular brand of fabric dye I couldn't find that up here in Canada so I ended up using acrylic paints and making a skin tone color and then using this fabric painting medium uh, that worked really well and so once I had all the parts uh, stuffed that's when I painted the skin tone on and so then this is for doll number one this is the size of head the pattern shows and I actually thought it was a little bit small and I mean once you have the hair on and that of course it'll be much bigger and so, but I decided to make the head a little bit bigger. So that's just a personal choice. And of course you can modify this any way you like. Um, of course, I still have to put her face on, but she does show you how to do the face and how to do it to scale and just basically using circles and squares and it's easier than you think. So that's where I'm at now. And so I'm going to carry on attaching the parts, doing the face, and once the doll is done, that's when I will start making clothing for her and embellishing her. So I'm really enjoying this. I hope this inspires you to take on a project like this. It really is a lot of fun. All right, so now I have her arms on as well, and I've attached her head and I have her face all colored in. And I love how the way the arms and legs are movable and so she can sit quite nicely on, a, on the ledge of a shelf or something like that. So the next step is to start to embellish her and make her some clothes and make the hair. So I am doing the hair using this technique, which is a colored wool yarn, and I've wrapped it around skewers and soaked it in water and then baked it in uh, the oven and it makes the yarn super curly. So I'll be making a wig for her out of this curly, colorful wool yarn. So that's what I'm doing next. All right. So uh, here she is with her hair 
I've made the wig. I just have it pinned on right now, but I was so excited. I wanted to share it right away. I just love how this turned out. I'll just turn her around and you can see how it is in the back. And it's just pinned right now. So I'll be sewing that on and sort of placing some of the locks in the back of her, her head. Um, but yeah, I think it just turned out so beautiful. And I've made her a little bodice here. These are the pattern pieces that I used for that. And I just have that pinned on now. And this is the sleeve and th this will go on the seam on the fold. So that will be a very full sleeve, like a princess sleeve. So you could modify this to make it any size you like. I'm gonna make like a little cap sleeve for this and then the skirt I'm just playing around with some tooling it's just pinned on and I'll probably put an underskirt underneath the the tooling and the bodice I've lined it with this color here so I'll probably use that color for the skirt with this sort of a crinoline above or below I'm not sure yet I'm thinking of maybe embellishing the bodice I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. It's interesting. It sort of unfolds as you go along. I do have this really beautiful ribbon that I've wrapped around her leg as a legging. So I think I'm going to do that, use those as leggings. And uh, I have little shoes to make her. And I think she's so adorable. And I'm having a lot of fun making her. So that's where I'm at so far. All right. So here she is. She's done as far as I'm willing to go with her. I got her little bodice made and I made these little cap sleeves and I made the crinoline skirt. I've done a little bit of jewelry for her and I did those leggings with that beautiful ribbon. I haven't made the shoes yet and the reason for that is quite honestly I ran out of steam <laughs> and I've had so much fun making this, but what I've discovered is that I don't have a lot of patience for detailed work and doing something like this, especially once you get to dressing and embellishing her is quite a bit of detailed and fine work. And the course that I took was about creating the doll and the body. And Patty Kulea has another course through Galley Studios, which is on embellishing. And I think that would be really worthwhile taking as as well and there is also a Facebook page for cloth doll creators that is absolutely amazing I'll put a link to that below and the dolls that some people make here are absolutely stunning stunning and I discovered that I'm actually not quite good at doing the detailed work and making the doll clothes and maybe this is something you're good at making small things and this is really a great project so I do totally recommend the book the course the Facebook page and I would recommend taking the second course as well and it was a lot of fun it did test my patience a bit a little bit though so but overall, I give this a big thumbs up. I think it's a great project. And uh, I learned how to do the hair on YouTube and I noticed the curls are relaxing and there must be a way to hold the curl, maybe with hairspray or glue or something. Patty shows a different method of making hair, but yeah, this is just so much fun. I totally recommend all of it.